Hello and welcome to worship at St. Barnabas Lutheran Church. We're so glad you found us. We pray that this service today will meet you where you're at and help you connect with, with God today. I'm in the room with all these wonderful quilts you see around me. We have quilts for sale. The quilters have been busy. They've been putting things together, sewing at home and coming here and trying to get them all laid out. $50 will get you a quilt. That's the minimum. There's a lot of love and work that goes into this and, and so forth. What they make on the sale goes back into resources. And then these go off to places in the world that really need warm blankets. So this week coming up, stop by, pick out your favorite, leave a check for the quilters, and we will uh, put it back into the resources. So that is, um, they'll be out this week. Find your way in. We have small groups going on right now for Lent. Uh, we are, we're studying, um, we're studying scripture, not, not in the way that we're digging down deep, but just looking at the Bible as, as, as a, this book that is an incredible book, and we're asking some well-known questions about it and kind of sharing our feelings about, about scripture. Making sense of scripture is what it's called. It's seven weeks. If you missed this first week, don't worry, you can still join. We have a Saturday afternoon at 3.30, we have a Tuesday night at 7, and we have a Wednesday at 10 a.m. You can join any one of those. Just contact the office. We'll get you on the email list. There is a book to go along with it, David Lose, L-O-S-E, Making Sense of Scripture. You can order it, and they have an e-book version as well. So join us for that. It's about an hour and 15 minutes, and the group time we talk and watch a DVD, and it's, it's, a, good, it's a good time. So that's coming up. During Lent on Wednesday nights, you're going to see the Holden Evening Prayer is available at 6 o'clock. Make your soup, join us for Holden Evening Prayer, and we'll, uh, we'll be together in this special way. We're also going to hear just little snippets from members of St. Barnabas. And the question is, what is your favorite Bible verse or passage, and why is it your favorite? And we're going to ask people to do little three-minute uh, little explanations record themselves at home and send it in, and we'll include them in the Holden Evening Prayer Time. We want to take this season of Lent and kind of get to know the Bible again and enjoy the gift that it is for us. This, today, if you're watching this, at 10.30, we're going to have a parking lot worship service, the same service, just done outside in your car with the FM radio. So stop by at 10.30. Even if you bring this one along and watch it in the car, We'll be together, we'll step out and share the peace and wave at each other. We'll do it again next week at 10.30. And then starting in March, we are going RSVP in this very room. Nine o'clock service will be every other, every other pew, socially distanced. The 10.30 service will be the odd number pews so that we're sitting in fresh seats each time. 50 people per service is what we'll start with and we'll see how that feels. But you can RSVP by calling into the office or emailing in to Julie, or there'll be an online piece for that. So watch for it. We're excited. We're going to wear the masks. We'll take communion in our seats, and we'll kind of step our way back into some normalcy. We're excited about that. So please plan to join us if you feel safe and if you feel well. <sighs> it's cold outside as we record this tonight. Please stay warm. I know today it's supposed to be uh, Sunday, it's supposed to be warmer, and uh, we hope for that. But uh, we just pray that, um, that you're well. We are praying for you, and we are so excited to when we get back together. Let us begin worship.
God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and one another. Please join me. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Beloved, God's word never fails. The promise rests on grace. By the saving love of Jesus Christ, the wisdom and power of God, your sins are forgiven, and God remembers them no more. Journey in the way of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And let us pray. God of the covenant, as the 40-day flood swept away the world's sinfulness, and watered new beginnings of life, so in the saving waters of our baptism we are born anew. Throughout these 40 days of Lent, unseal with us the wellspring of your grace. Cleanse our hearts of all turning away from you and encourage your gift of new life to flourish once again. Grant this through Jesus Christ our Redeemer who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit as one God, now and forever. Amen. Today's reading is the conclusion to the flood story. Because of human sin, God destroys the earth by flood, saving only Noah, his family, and the animals on the ark. Yet divine destruction gives way to divine commitment. As in the first creation, God blesses humanity and establishes a covenant with all creatures. A reading from the book of Genesis. God said to Noah and to his sons with him, As for me, I am establishing my covenant with you and your descendants after you, and with every living creature that is with you, the birds, the domestic animals, and every animal of the earth with you, as many as came out of the ark. I establish my covenant with you, that never again shall all flesh be cut off by the waters of a flood, and never again shall there be a flood to destroy the earth. God said, This is the sign of the covenant that I make between me and you and every living creature that is with you for all future generations. I have set my bow in the clouds, and it shall be a sign of the covenant between me and the earth. When I bring clouds over the earth and the bow is seen in the clouds, I will remember my covenant that is between me and you and every living creature of all flesh. And the waters shall never again become a flood to destroy all flesh. When the bow is in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and every living creature of all flesh that is on the earth. God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant that I have established between me and all flesh that is on the earth. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As God acted through Christ's suffering and death to bring us to God, so God acts through baptism to save us from a sinful existence. This spiritual cleansing marks our new life in Christ a reading from the first letter of Peter. Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit, in which also he went and made a proclamation to the spirits in prison, who in former times did not obey, when God waited, waited patiently in the days of Noah 
during the building of the ark in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from the body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The spirit that comes upon Jesus at his baptism sustains him when he is tested by Satan so that he might proclaim the good news of God's reign. The Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the spirit descending like a dove upon him. And a voice came from heaven, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. And the spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beasts and the angels waited upon him. Now, after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Grace and peace to you from God our Creator, Jesus, the Savior and the Holy Spirit, the sustainer of our faith. Why are there so many songs about rainbows? And what's on the other side? Rainbows are visions. They're only illusions. And rainbows have nothing to hide. Someday we'll find it, the rainbow connection, the lovers, the dreamers, and me. Oh, yes, these famous musings from that great contemporary philosopher we know as Kermit the Frog. And they focus our attention on our first reading this morning from Genesis 9. You know the one, Noah, the ark, and the rainbow. I think we would be hard pressed to come up with a symbol or an image that has a wider appeal than the rainbow. Scientists and lyricists and photographers and romantics are all drawn to this remarkable optical and meteorological phenomenon that caused a spectrum of light to appear in the sky when droplets of water capture the light of the sun in this perfect manner to create this multicolored arc. Now, I know that there's a good scientific explanation for what causes a rainbow, but who cares? We love rainbows. We sing about them, and we will pull off on the side of the road just to get a glimpse of a rainbow in the sky. And we get thrilled when we can capture a rainbow in a photo. I bet if I checked your Facebook page, I bet there might be a post about a rainbow picture that you took. And not many songs are more popular than the Judy Garland classic, Somewhere over the rainbow, way up high. Our Old Testament lesson for today recalls the wonderful scriptural narrative of Noah and the flood, one of those biblical stories that we feel that we know fairly well, but in reality, we generally miss the point of the story. The most common mistake we make is to simply think that it's this delightful children's story about animals in a houseboat and the appearance of a rainbow as a kind of all-clear sign that the flood time is over. But other common mistakes we make is, is to think it's a story completely ignoring children as we interpret the story as a description of a time when God was so discouraged with humanity and humanity's rebellion that God, in effect, reversed the creation 
That which God had pronounced good in creation is now seen as evil. Instead of holding back the waters to create the heavens and the earth, God allows the waters to flood the whole earth, wiping out nearly everything. Thus we have the story of the creator God, now totally overcome by wrath and fury, ready and willing to reverse creation by destroying everything. Well, neither of these interpretations of Noah and the flood are helpful. A better way to understand the story is to see it as an expression of God's determination to restore the harmony that was the original purpose in the creation. In today's lesson, we see God establish a covenant. That's a fancy word for promise with Noah and Noah's descendants. Not based on the demand for better behavior, but purely based on God's gracious promise to put aside forever this option of destruction. In some primitive societies from the past, the symbol of peace was to hang your war bow up, meaning that you no longer would let arrows fly in the air in combat. Well, in effect, God hangs up a bow, a rainbow in the sky as a token of God's determination to never bring destruction upon the world again. So the event that is captured in our Old Testament lesson takes on profound significance. In effect, all of creation is given a new beginning, a new chance to live in accordance with God's will and purpose. I suppose we could say that this is not a new beginning, but a restoration of the earlier promise God made with us. God uses the remnant from the ark, Noah and his family and the creatures, as the seed corn, so to speak, for this new and abundant harvest. The essence of our Old Testament lesson is a great example of good news that is found in the Hebrew Bible. It is found in the promise that God made to Noah and his family, where God says, I now establish my covenant, my promise with you and with your descendants after you, and with every living creature that was, that was with you, the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you and every living creature on earth, I establish my covenant with you. Never again with all life, will all life be destroyed by the waters of the flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. I think this is a wonderful story. The story tells us that the rainbow should have a special meaning to us as Christian people. And yes, the rainbow has been appropriated by all sorts of, of different groups and for all sorts of different purposes. The rainbow has become this, this symbol of inclusivity, particularly to show our open attitudes towards the LGBTQ plus community. I think that's great. I also remember years ago when Jesse Jackson led the Rainbow Coalition to encourage multicultural participation in the election process. You remember that? And way back in the 16th century, the rainbow was a symbol for the German peasants uprising against those feudal lords of their land. The rainbow even remains this peace symbol throughout Europe and other parts of the world too. There was even one major British poet, William Woodsworth, who, who wrote poetry back in the early 1800s about the rainbow. My heart leaps up when I behold a rainbow in the sky. So was it when my life began, so is it now I am a man. So be it when I shall grow old or let me die. That's from his poem, My Heart Leaps Up. I sort of wonder if people today with our materialistic society associate a rainbow with that pot of gold that is supposedly at the end of a rainbow, guarded, of course, by some selfish leprechaun. How sad to lose sight of this precious scriptural understanding 
that the rainbow represents God's sacred promise to never again destroy the world. God's sacred promise to always be with us. I mean, come on. Isn't that not of infinite more value than a pot of gold? Today we observe this first Sunday of Lent and we begin the serious work of preparing to celebrate the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ. The events of Holy Week certainly are more powerful than the rainbow that God hung in the sky putting up his bow. It is more powerful than that. And yet I believe this parallel works perfectly. Both events declare that God is not driven to punish, but rather desires to restore. Both events capture the wisdom of these precious words from the Gospel of John, the famous words of John 3, 16 and 17. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not perish, but have eternal life. Indeed, it goes on, God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through Christ. Many of us know people, maybe even people close to us, who have been devastated by economic unrest and natural disasters, especially those we've seen this week. Maybe you have family down south. We have all been apart this last year, social distancing becoming this new reality. I'm thinking, too, of those who have been uprooted by the looming house foreclosures and evictions, and those who have lost employment, and just the, the general economic downturn. Some say the recovery is, is going to be down the road. I still see a lot of people struggling to find a job now. So let us not forget, we people of faith, let us point to the rainbow, and as we point our faces to Calvary and the cross, that we remember that God has not and will not forget us. God has promised that God would not forsake us when the floodwaters of sorrow and suffering threaten us. Hold on to that promise. And let us never forget that when the cross and the rainbow meet, they remind us that God has made a covenant, a promise with us, and that promise, that covenant will not fail. We begin our Lenten journey once again to joyfully find the promise of God remaining. Amen. Followers of Christ, our Lord enters the wilderness where he was tempted like us, but did not sin. Mindful of our own brokenness, let us follow after him, 
praying for ourselves and for the whole world as we say, hear us, O God, your mercy is great. For the church, that all may come to know God's promise through the waters of baptism and may enter gladly into this season of Lent. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For our world, that all living creatures may find goodness on the earth and goodness in our home and where life and death may both be God's blessing. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. For deliverance, that in the wastelands made by our greed and indifference, we may refrain from harmful actions and grow hungry for justice. Hear us, O Lord. Your mercy is great. For ourselves, that we may lean forward toward Easter, even while in the midst of this pandemic. Help us as we care for our sick and needy, remember our dead, and believe in the good news of Christ. Hear us, O God. Your mercy is great. We entrust ourselves and all our prayers to you, O faithful God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Faithful God, you walk beside us in desert places, and you meet us in our hunger with bread from heaven. Accompany us in this meal that we may pass over from death to life with Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. At this time, I invite you to get your bread and wine or your grape juice and crackers, whatever you have available, and uh, meet me back here. Also, if this is not the way you would like to receive communion and you'd rather not do it at home, there's a prayer uh, available in your bulletin to pray in in lieu of, of communion. So we offer that to you as well. These are words of life. The night before Jesus died, he was gathered with his disciples. They were sharing the Passover meal. At that meal, Jesus took bread, gave thanks. He broke it, gave it to his disciples saying, take and eat. This now is my body, it is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to his disciples saying, this cup is now a new promise in my blood. It is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray as Jesus taught us, Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Save us from the time of trial and deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Amen. If you are alone in your apartment right now with me we can take communion together if you're gathered with your family i invite you to take a piece of bread and break it off and you say the words the body of christ given for you they may either dip it into the wine or grape juice or partake and pass the cup with the words the blood of christ shed for you Take all the time you need. You may pause the video and then join us again for the post-communion prayer. Let us pray. God of steadfast love, at this table you gather your people into one body for the sake of the world. Send us in the power of your spirit that our lives bear witness to the love that has made us new in Jesus Christ our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Receive the blessing. 
You are what God made you to be, created in Christ Jesus for good works, chosen as holy and beloved, freed to serve your neighbor. God bless you that you may be a blessing in the name of the Holy One and life-giving Trinity. Amen. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Amen.